fellowship service that we can share around the world tonight. There's a lot of focus on things that are not biblical during this time of the year, so we thought it might be good if we if we focus on things that, that are biblical. And um, there's a lot of people hurting this time of year. This has been two years of uh, Satan has been loose and he is attacking the saints. Um, so anyway, we're going to sing a few hymns and then I'm going to uh, make a few comments from a passage of scripture in the Psalms tonight. You know the Psalms are very comforting. I've often told people at the lowest points in my life, I find myself going to the Psalms for comfort, for encouragement, and for sustenance. I'm just, <coughs> excuse me, I had to sneeze there. Um, and tonight we're going to be looking at... Uh, the 11th Psalm, and be making some comments about the 11th Psalm. It's a very short Psalm, but it's full of comfort for the believer. Um, the first hymn we're going to sing tonight is The Child of Hope, 352. This is where the prophet is foretelling of the birth of Christ in the ninth chapter of Isaiah. And that's what this, uh, this uh, hymn is about. The page 352. To us the child of hope is born to us the Son is given to hearts of earth obey Him all the hosts of heaven children of earth obey and all the hosts of heaven whose name shall be the Prince of Peace forevermore adored the wonderful the Counselor the great and mighty Lord, the wonderful, the counselor, the great and mighty Lord. His power increasing still shall spend, his reign no end shall know. Justice shall guard his throne above, and peace abound below. Justice shall bound his throne above. And peace be unto love. Next number. Two hundred and fifty-four. Oh. Two hundred and fifty-four. Okay. Is that what you said? I said three fifty four. Three fifty four. Okay. When my soul is singing in that promised land above, I'll be satisfied, praising Christ the Savior for redeeming grace and love. I'll be satisfied, I'll be satisfied, I'll be satisfied. When my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord, I'll be satisfied. Living in a city where the soul shall never die, I'll be satisfied. There to meet with loved ones, never more to say goodbye, I'll be satisfied. When I meet the ransomed over on the golden shore, I'll be satisfied. There I'll join the angels singing praises evermore, I'll be satisfied. I'll be satisfied, 
I'll be satisfied when my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord. I'll be satisfied. Okay, Rosette would like to sing 358. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Lift up the voice. 
praise him, praise him, devotion. Saints of all earth, before him should bow. Angels in heaven, worship him, saying, Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Lord, may we come before thee with singing. Filled with thy spirit, wisdom, and power. May we ascribe thee glory and honor. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Worthy of riches, blessings, and honor. Worthy of wisdom, glory, and power. Worthy of earth and heaven's thanksgiving. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Lord, we pray that you would help us tonight say something that might encourage others and most of all that would glorify and lift up your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight I'm just going to look at a very short psalm, uh, seven verses in Psalm 11. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon their string, that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. The foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven, his eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone in a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the upright. Well, during this time, you know, we would like to escape. You know, we we would like to not even have to deal with all of these things that are going on in our world. And Frankly, that is one of the reasons that I moved to southwest Missouri, was to flee to my little Ozark Mountain, (laughs) so I wouldn't have to deal with a lot of things. We see that the wicked are bending their arrows. They are trying to shoot at the upright in heart trying to attack God's people. And they are attacking God's people. We hear it every day. We hear these ungodly people get up and blaspheme Jesus Christ, blaspheme his word, blaspheme the fact that he created the universe in six days, blaspheme the fact that he was virgin born, blaspheme the fact that he did all these miracles. You know, and blaspheme the fact that he's coming back again. One of these days they won't blaspheme. They bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privately shoot at the upright heart. Do you feel like you've been shot at lately? And then he asks a question. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? They've done a pretty good job of destroying the foundations of God's Word by coming up with all these new translations and these new Bible versions and taking massive scriptures out of the Bible and adding massive scriptures to the Bible. They've denied election and predestination. They've denied the uh, sovereignty of God and salvation. They've denied the six-day literal creation and replaced it with Darwinian evolutionary theory. They've denied the miracles of Christ and the virgin birth. 
they pretty well destroyed the foundation, have they not? So what are the righteous going to do? That's the question. What are the righteous going to do? We're going to hold to God's unchanging hand. We're going to hold to the word of God. We're going to keep our authorized 1611 King James Version of the Bible near at hand. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in the heavens. His eyes behold his eyelids try the children of men. There's nothing that is going on in the universe without God's knowledge. He is omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's, he sees everything. He knows everything. And nothing is beyond his reach. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. We're told in Psalm 2, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? They're shaking their fists in the face of God. But the Lord um, is behind and upholding the righteous. But those who are coming against him, the Bible says, his soul hated. And here is going to be God's response to the wicked. Those who are, who are blaspheming his name and questioning his authority. In verse 6 it says, so Upon the wicked he shall rain snares and fire and brimstone, a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. We will see it one of these days. And God pours out his judgment, his vengeance upon the wicked. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold upright. And so this is an encouragement tonight to all of those who uh, see the corrupt, evil nature of our world. All the pornography and all the evil how even Facebook is full with all this garbage, YouTube, and, and all these different platforms. But we know that God will uphold the righteous. And so let us continue to stay in his word and not succumb to the evil world. Um... We have um, great hope and consolation in, in God. Let's end with 169. This ask a lot of questions, but questions are already answered in God's word for us. Who flung the stars out into space and holds them in their proper place? Who like the curtain stretched the sky to make a place for birds to fly? Who sends the wind and sun and rain to nourish fields of golden grain? Who forms the seed that makes the wheat and gives us daily bread to eat? Let's sing number 169. Who flung the stars out into space and holds them in their proper place? Who light the curtain and stretch the sky? To make a place for birds to fly. Who sends the wind and sun and rain to nourish fields of golden grain? Who forms the sea that makes the wheat and gives the daily bread to eat? Who in the winter sends the snow? Oh, tell me who if you should know. Who has designed each lovely place? What wondrous power did it take? Who made the never-ending sea? Who formed the grass, the vine, the tree? Who made the cattle on the hill? And creeping things in rocks and rills? Who holds all things within his hand? Who owns all houses, fields, and land? Who keeps her souls each passing hour? No man has this almighty 
mighty power is the Lord and He alone. Man has no glory of His own. We have no goodness we can claim. So let us publish His great name. He takes the sinner vain and wild and makes him as a little child. Subdues His will and guides His feet and draws him to the mercy seat. Let all creation lift its voice, and in the Lord let us rejoice. Let all his works praise and confess the glory of his righteousness. Well, we need to be proclaiming the glory of the Lord. I want to remind everyone we will be having a fellowship call tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock central. And uh, you're welcome to join us if you want the link to that. If you'll send me an email at rothmillerstewart at gmail.com, I will send you a link. Again, my email address is roth, R-O-T-H, Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R, Stewart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T, at gmail.com. I hope you have a blessed evening. And and, um, let us always remember that Our worship should be only to the one who's worthy to be worshipped, and that is Jesus Christ, our Savior. God bless.